Hi, I'm Alex from I Hate Everything. Three days after I released my review of Cool Cat Saves the Kids, a terrible, infamously bad movie, I received a suspicious copyright strike from the director of the movie himself, Derek Savage, who over the course of about a month used this unfair strike to censor and restrict my channel, and even tried to bully an apology out of me in private emails I've since made public. This clueless man, who has shown multiple times that he has about as little understanding of how the fair use law works as he is knowledgeable in competent filmmaking, was given the tools to waste my time and threaten my livelihood purely because he didn't like my negative review of his god-awful movie. Which, by the way, I did actually recommend at the very end of the video, in a so-bad-that-it's-good way. And I wasn't alone, either. It turns out Mr. Savage had been on a copyright-striking rampage, silencing at least two other creators who had a negatively slanted review of his movie. Savage's childish behaviour aside, this highlights how hilariously slanted and weighted against the creator the YouTube copyright strike system is. He didn't have to show any evidence, he didn't have to prove his case or worry about any possible repercussions. He definitely would have lost in court if it had gone there, so once he failed to refute my appeal, the strike's time limit ran out and my channel was eventually restored to normal. It was a colossal waste of time and energy for everyone involved. Hey guys, it's YMS here to explain a few things about YouTube's copyright system. It wasn't too long ago when one of my videos was unjustly blocked worldwide and I was unable to appeal it because I had other appeals that had yet to be resolved. Now unfortunately, YouTube only allows you to file three appeals at one time. What is the reasoning for this? Well, I'm not really sure, but all it seems to do is provide more leverage for the claimant and less leverage for the defendant. If Content ID detects copyrighted material within your video, then an automatic action will take place. This action is entirely dependent on what the copyright holder previously set it to do. For example, if I owned a movie and I wanted to add it to YouTube's content ID system, I would get to decide how much footage from my film would need to appear in someone else's video before it automatically claims it. You can also receive claims that were filed manually. A manual claim implies that somebody actually watched the video and determined it was infringing before filing the initial claim. YouTube's system is set up in such a way that incentivizes claimants to abuse it, and that is precisely why their system is rampant with abuse. So you can file a dispute and then it's up to the claimant to respond to your dispute within 30 days. If they don't respond within 30 days, then their claim will be removed and your video will be back to normal. If they do respond, they can either remove the claim or reinstate the claim. If they reinstate the claim, then you have to file an appeal and they have yet another 30 days to respond to that. The most excruciating part was the lack of human interaction from anyone at YouTube. The automated emails and forms seem designed in such a way that no human working at YouTube will ever actually see it, so it makes you feel pretty helpless and pretty worthless. There was no one I could contact to fix a very, very simple problem, so the entire situation was elongated and needlessly blown comically out of proportion. I see no reason why there should be a limit on the amount of appeals I can send when there's no limit on the amount of claims I can receive. And what's worse is that even if the amount of appeals was increased, I would still only really be able to use two at a time. Reason being is that during the appeals process, the claimant has the option to remove your video and issue a strike on your account. You can fight to get your video back up and get the strike removed from your channel by filing a counter notification, but those can take up to a month to complete as well. And as soon as you have three strikes on your channel at any one time, your channel is automatically removed. So even though I'm technically allowed three appeals at once, I make sure to limit myself to two in case all of them come back with takedown notices. You would think that studios wouldn't go around around filing fraudulent claims against people's videos, but not only do they do that, but they often outsource other companies to do it for them. I've received countless claims from a rights management company known as Egeda, and this claimant in particular is one of the worst to deal with. You can dispute your claim and provide factual evidence as to why your content falls under fair use, and they just reinstate their claim anyway and will often issue a takedown notice against your video. I've fought and won every single illegitimate claim thrown my way, but as the number of videos on my channel increases, so does the likelihood that I'll be stuck with too many claims to deal with at once. There's countless videos on my channel that I was unable to monetize for several months just because of how long the claims process takes. When you receive a claim, it hasn't even gone through a human being yet. YouTube gives claimants the power to make money off of your video before it's even been determined that your video is actually infringing upon their copyright. Why should content creators be responsible for having to deal with angry people who take reviews personally and use that anger to maliciously target and silence voices with a system that allows them to do so. It's no wonder studios don't think twice about issuing illegitimate claims because chances are either you won't fight back or you won't be able to fight back. And only months after this incident, my entire channel was taken down for about 17 hours because of false spam flaggings. It took multiple weeks to even receive any kind of explanation or apology from YouTube directly. And if I never made such a loud noise about it, my channel would have remained taken down for no reason.
I'm Alex from I Hate Everything, and where's the fair use? I'm Adam from YMS or Your Movie Sucks, and I've been asking, where's the fair use?